It is enough for one day. How did you let us go in? Obey the why. A few more ridges, and we will be done with the weeding of this farmland. You know we have to finish this today. Remember, the cultivation season for the pigeon pea will soon be gone. And the land in front of the hill is yet to be cultivated. Brother. The sun has illuminated the moon for two days now, and tonight will be the third night of the full moon. You are right. I almost forgot. Pao Cheje. Pao Cheje. Okay, in that case, take my home. Let's go home. Now! Ajuma, please wait for me. Why are you so much in a hurry? Mile, you have just two drums to fill. There is only you, your father, your mother, and two siblings. My father has three wives, and there are eight of us from my mother alone. I have seven drums to fill, and you know how far the river is. Oh, well, you started out early. Why are you so much in a hurry? It is because it's my mother's turn to cook today. I have to fill all the seven drums, wash the plate, and then join my mother in the kitchen. And after that? <sighs> I heard the elder son of my father telling the sister that the moon will be full for the third time tonight. And what does that mean? Pa Ocheje. Oh, I forgot. My mother reminded me this morning. In that case, let's hurry up. I'll help you. I am indeed happy that you are gathered once again to listen to my stories. I know you must have listened to lots and lots of stories. Stories about the orphan child and the wicked stepmother. Stories about the tortoise and his numerous tricks. But today, I want to tell you a very, very important story. The story of our people. The story of how we came about. The evolution of the Igala people. The story of our tribe. The history of our people. Do you want to listen to the story? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> Some people say we come from Kalemborongo Empire. Some trace our roots to the old Oyo. Others say we come from the old Jukum village in Wukari. Some people even claim we have our origin with the Benins. No doubt, at one point in time, we have had cause to interact with these groups of people. Especially the most recent, which are the Jukuns, without which the Igala story will not be complete. Enebani, what was our relationship with the Jukuns? I heard when once they are slaves. The Ata used to pay tribute to the Jukun king. This suggests that we were once under their rule, but not as slaves. However, at some point in time, we fought and freed ourselves when the Jukun king sent emissaries to the Atta to remind him of his annual tribute. But the Atta was tired of being answerable to another king and so he decided he was no longer going to pay the tribute. No! I am not his servant. My people are not slaves to his people. It is not proper for us to till the soil, collect the taxes, then take our produce and use to appease another kingdom. 
I shall no longer pay tribute to another king. I know what to do. This is an insult! How can he bring this royalty to me? Go and bring that man! Who dares me? Seize every valuable in his kingdom and bring them to me. And if anyone dares stop you, destroy his dwelling. Go now! Go! The Jukun king, very angry, decided to send his soldiers down to the Atta to collect the tribute by enemies. The Atta, scared that the looming war was going to rubbish him, quickly consulted the oracle and was told that the princess had to be sacrificed. Princess Omodoko was buried beside the Inachalo River. A potion was made and the Inachalo River was poisoned. Let it flow! Inachalo! Wherever this river extends to, unless, unless they do not drink of its water, they shall fall in battle. This scenario gave birth to the name of the river that you all know today. Inachalo. Inachalo. Mm -hmm. Now you know. The enemy, very tired, had to come by the river so as to attack the kingdom unexpectedly. By morning, the soldiers who had already drank of the river were already purging and dying. Then, the Igala warriors, led by the Atas warlord, pursued them and struck them in their weakened state.
They are drinking the water. Warriors of Ikala land. Warriors of Ikala land. This moment, on this day, I charge you to become the man that you were born to be. As you can see, the gods have given unto us our enemies on the platter of gold. <laughs> this is where we hold them. This is where we fight. And this is where they die. Remember this day, that this is the day we rescue our people from mysticism and tyranny. Today, we will spill all blood necessary to be spilled. Because this land was given to us by our daughter Machala. And we will protect it with our last blood. When your shield become heavy in battle, let the brother help the brother. Let us fight side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Let us do this for the honor of Igala land. <laughs> It was said that the Igala warriors made use of the Kukuruku masquerade and pursued them far up to the Ocheku river. It was at this river that a truce was called by the defeated Jukun leader, the Ohulega of Apa, where he accepted this river as the boundary and renounced all further claims to suzerainty. We the Igalas refer to the Jukuns as Apa. My grandmother told me that we, the Igalas, enjoyed from their farm produce such as sweet potato, which we, the Igalas, refer to as Utu Apa, literally meaning the Apa type of yam. And Popo, Echibapa, shortened as Echibapa. However, we can trace our verified leadership to Abutweje. We are sons of Abutweje offsprings of the leopard and our loins are made from that root led in plains through the rough lands of Omala through numerous lands and right into the bank of Ocheche and then Called us wanderers and a bush tribe. Were we really wanderers? Like every other tribe, we have wandered, but that in the name of migration. This place is too hot. Too hot, even for other creatures to remain in their holes and caves. And you said we cannot go to this stream at this time? Not this time. The heat in this place forces the wild beasts to remain at the back of the river by night. Even this our resting place is not safe during the day. The crawling beasts often look for corners to hide from this crushing sun. This is not a good place for us to settle. So we had to leave. We went close to Afar, the land of talking trees. Our people found solace there. But soon, the land lost its fertility and brought heavy hunger on the people. So we had to leave for another land. 
I cannot remember the name of the place uh, at the moment. Um, but I think it's close to Ajachem. Yes. What happened at Ajachem? Was the land good for our people? Yes. Ajachem was fertile. And the weather, friendly. But the land suddenly began to feed on our people, our wives, our children, sunrise after sunrise. And it got worse. And the people had no choice but to leave the land that has brought so much death on the people. <laughs> Today, the tears of women flow on that land and the griffin of men remain on the branches of its trees. <sighs> we have really, really come a long way. Where did they go when they left this evil land? Udane Biomi. That is the name. Only few people know about this land and that is because Abu Teje cursed the land not to sleep until it has vomited everything it took from our people. We have given more than we have to build for ourselves a kingdom that we can call our own. My grandfather said, one night, the ground opened and began to feed on our people. It was a moment of grief. Even the gods must have felt the bitterness of the land. How did Abu Tuaje cause the land? I thought, by now, we would have found a place to rest. This land that I thought would be home ended up swallowing my people. You, 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 this land, you shall never know rest until you vomit my people, our people today. I curse you! I curse you! I'm a kifamu! I'm a kifamu! I curse you! Nothing! Nothing productive shall come from this land! I curse you! Rocks and hills shall overtake you! I'm a, I'm a kifamu! You are cursed! You are cursed! You are cursed! The fury of his bitterness and the strength of his hatred were enough to bring doom 
upon the earth. They said that for days he fed on dust and pebbles of rocks, and this tormented the dead and even the unborn. So they gathered their belongings, the men their machete, the women their children, and they marched towards Ocheche, the land of dripping waters. Ocheche, the land of dripping waters. How do you mean Enegbani? That was the land where the people met solace and solitude from the grief they had met. Not a large land though, but friendly, kind and fair to our people. They began to build their kingdom and dynasty and gradually a home and a place of return. The land grew as they spread their compounds towards Ega, towards Ajaka and Ugolau, and they called this place Ida, meaning their sojourn has ended here. So you see, the Igalas have come a long way, fighting even the earth to build for herself a kingdom. What about Abu Tueje? What happened to him? After taking the people to a safe place, a better place, one morning the people woke up to the smell of gunpowder. That hero, which the people shielded behind, had danced to meet his ancestors and forebears. The people cried for their hero. A woman who was more than ten men put together. A woman who was herself a warrior. A man woman. You call yourselves men? Warriors? Can you defend your wives and your children? How can you defend our territories from greedy kingdoms? I want real men as warriors! Gather your men. All the men you need for battle. Why are you cold? My queen, I am not cold. It is just too many to running through my head. But fear won't let me share with your majesty. You are my friend. Talk to me. I... I I think you have been too harsh on the warriors. Remember, they are men, Iganya. When the war comes and we are conquered, it will have nothing to do with gender. Every one of us will be destroyed. Today, I am the Atta. The safety of this kingdom is my utmost responsibility. I respect them, but I need them to know that it is not just a woman leading them to war. It is the Atta. Your Majesty. She ventured into the sacred land, Ojaina, a place where only the spiritually strong could visit and return. She began to lead Ida just like her father did. Some said she married a hunter. However, in the end, she was the first and only female Atta we ever had. She was later deposed because she was a woman and therefore 
couldn't perform the necessary rituals and sacrifices required of an attack. The Igala traditional belief system is predated on an ancestral spirit system. Communities, families, individuals had shrines serving to worship deities and spirits. It was forbidden for a woman to lead those worships. Aganapoje was made a tie in her stead. Anybody? Is that why some tribes refer to us as land of women? No. Where did you hear that? Our tribe is one known for its valor. Our fury is as large as the Alobi mountain. Our men are truly men. And on the battlefield, we are known for our thrive. Our people are brave, sincere, hospitable, and knowledgeable. We are indeed very proud people. And the qualities I listed are those very things that makes us proud. We have our traditional festivals. Ocho festival is the symbolic hunting festival of the Atta. There is the Ogagani festival which usually happens seven days after the Ocho festival where the Atta assembles. My greetings be with you, people of my father's children. Especially for your company during my hunting, Ocho Festival. May God give you health, bumper harvest, and prosperous children. Help one another instead of quarreling and fighting or seeking to kill one another. Those of you who are hunters, don't forget to bring me the headquarters if it is a dare. Skin if it is the over. The tusk and headquarters if you kill a hippopotamus. And tusk if you kill an elephant. You know all the portions of your kill that are mine by right. I am returning to sit on the royal seat. If any one of you have issues, troubling your household. Bring it up now so that it can be resolved. I just imagine the Atta in this festival, dressed up in his regalia and full of his glory, with his ikebe around his head, his royal robe and his scary mask on his chest. Ejubejuailu. Yes, that's it. What does it mean? Hmm. The Great Benin War. A war that will be talked about from century to century until the end of time. The Igalas defeated the Benins, carrying with them the mask that the Oba of Benin wears. The war could best be described as a war of mutual independence. As the Atta and the Oba of Benin had some sort of mutual alignment before they fell apart. Iniqui daughter of Ata Egbo Omidoko, offered herself to be buried alive in order for all Igalas to live as free men and women. I cannot do it. This is too much for one man to give. What is it? Atau Gigi, my brave father, a true son of his father, the lion that roars and all other animals go into hiding. Every day, I wake up to this wonderful life fulfillment 
of having you as a father. But I have just one regret. What is it? That I have just one life to give for the Igala kingdom to survive. If I had another life, I would still give. I heard everything. I listened to the conversation between you and the priest. I honor the God, and you know it. If my death will liberate our kingdom, then it is decided. I don't want to stand in the way of our God. I am ready, Father. Today the gods have given us one more opportunity to impress them in battle and we will seize it. Take pride in this day, for this war will be talked about from generations to generations. The Venice have dared us to war and we will show them. We will show them that our strength is not in our numbers but in our unbreakable unity. When they cross the river bank, let your spears and shields tell them that this land was given to us by our forefathers and it can never be written in history that it was conquered in our own time. Let fear be far from you. For even if you die in battle, by nightfall, you shall whine and dine with your ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> you know the price that has been paid. So it is either we die or victory! 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 Ah! victory! On the other side are yours to take when you get there you will know that everything i told you is true today let it be in history that we gave everything for the continuity of Igala. on which i mount my hope Today, we spare no one. We take no prisoners. We take no slaves. The mask around the attack's neck in the spiritual realm means the attack is wearing the head of the Oba of Benin. So, it was during this war that we got that mask. It was said to be an embodiment of great spiritual power and a symbol of conquest. Today, the attack wears it in its official capacity. We got so many things from there. For instance, the coconut, which was like a bigger version of our palm kernel that we used to know. We named it Unoba, which means the Oba's kernel. We were a force to reckon with, and over the years, our land has grown. However, very sadly, one thing has always been our problem. And what is that one thing? Unity. We are not united at all. 
there seemed to be no love among us. Brother hates brother. Friends betray each other. Jealousy everywhere. Conspiracy and greed. Too much sentiment has torn the tribe into shreds, my children. And what is left is a shadow of what it used to be. Enegbani, what can we do to save the tribe and kingdom? We must begin to love one another. We must be our brother's keeper. We must search for ways to ensure that the unity of the tribe is protected. One must help another and another must help one. We must refuse to pull each other down. We must strive to help one another. These were the desires of Abuteje, Ebulejonu and Aganapoje. Moving from one great man to the other, the history of the Igala kingdom has recorded great leaders like Idoko, Ayegba, Amoboni, Ali Obaje, Idako Amoboni II, and so many more yet to come. It is late already. Tomorrow, I'll tell you another story. But until then, let's go and have dinner and rest our body. But you must make sure that what you've heard today travels to the ears of every human that has Igala blood flowing through their veins. <laughs>